Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a website called gmathacks.com and I've written several GMAT textbooks including Total GMAT Math, and Total GMAT Verbal, and a whole slew of practice problems to help you prepare for the test. You can buy those at my site gmathacks.com or at amazon.com by searching for the names of the books. What I want to talk to you about today is prime numbers on the GMAT. Now there aren't a lot of questions on the GMAT Math section about prime numbers, literally. Nothing's going to ask you what's the definition of a prime number or is 67 a prime number. However, prime numbers are a very key concept in number theory or properties of numbers as we sometimes refer to them. And if you understand prime numbers thoroughly, you have a big leg up on a lot of those other topics. So what I want to do today is just give you some basic grounding in what prime numbers are and how they serve as building blocks for other numbers, which gives you a step towards those other sorts of questions that I'll go into in future videos, or you can read about in my books. So first point of order is what is a prime number? A prime number is a number that is divisible only by one and itself. So for instance, two is a prime number. Two is divisible by two, it's divisible by one, but it's not divisible by anything else. If you try to divide two by three or by seven or by 12, you end up with something other than an integer, something other than a whole number. You end up with a fraction, a decimal, something other than an integer. And we're really gonna be doing a lot of talking about integers today. Three is another prime number. Three, if you divide it by two, you get one and a half, not an integer. The only numbers that three is divisible by are one and three. If we keep going up, we get some other primes. 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. There's a lot of prime numbers just within the first 100. It's actually worth your time to come up with the list of primes up to 30, 40, maybe even 50, and make sure you have those memorized. There are some questions on the GMAT where, again, they won't ask you literally, is 29 a prime number? Is 27 a prime number? But knowing that 27 isn't prime, 29 is prime, it will save you a lot of time. It just makes the next steps that much more automatic. So these numbers, all primes. You can divide 13 by whatever you want, but if you're not dividing by 1 or 13, you're not going to end up with a whole number. And that, again, that's the definition of a prime. So notice one pattern of all the primes after 2. These are all odd numbers, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. If you look at some bigger primes, they're all going to be odd, 19, 29, 37, and so on. If you think about it for a second, it should be clear why this is. Two is a prime number, but any other even number, four, six, eight, 28, 36, 56, and so on, all those even numbers are by definition divisible by two. So if you take any even number larger than two, it's divisible by two. And if a number is divisible by two, it no longer fits the definition of a prime number. So two is unique among primes. It's the only even prime. That's something that again won't be literally tested. You won't see a GMAT question that says true or false, two is the only even prime number, but it will come up again and again as part of more difficult, more complex questions. So two is the only even prime. Every other prime number is odd. Now, as the numbers get bigger, you might notice primes start to get a little more spaced out, which leads us to wonder, what about all those other numbers? What about 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12? There's a lot of interesting numbers in here that don't make our prime list. Now a number that's not prime, we call composite. Again, not a definition you're going to see a lot on the GMAT, but a concept that comes in very important. So all those composite numbers, they're divisible by numbers other than one and itself. So if we take 12, for instance, 12, obviously it's divisible by one, obviously it's divisible by itself, 12, but it's also divisible by two, divisible by three, divisible by four, divisible by six. So for all those reasons, it's not prime. Now, the interesting thing about composite numbers, and this is where we start getting into a little bit more complex territory, is that any composite number has one unique prime factorization. So let's take 12. 12, you can get there in multiple ways. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. 
but some of those aren't prime numbers. There's one unique set of prime numbers that you can multiply together to get to 12. Now, you can work this out on your own, but to save us a little time today, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. There's no other way to combine a bunch of prime numbers, multiply them together, and get to 12. You can try 3 times 3 times 2, but that's something else. 2 times 3 is something else. 2 times 2 times 2. Again, this is the only way to get to 12. Try it with any composite number, any non-prime number, and you'll find there's only one unique prime factorization. So what that means is that every number has certain characteristics vis-a-vis -vis primes. A number that isn't prime is, in a sense, de defined by its prime factorization. So if you take a number like 8 here, 8 is interesting because it's cons it consists of only 2's. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. 12, as we've seen, is 2 times 2 times 3. So it's not one of these numbers that's only divisible by 2, like 8 or 16 or 32. 9 is only divisible by 3's. 3 times 3. There's no 2's in 9. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself here in terms of GMAT topics. When you get into topics like least common multiple, greatest common factor, which come up a lot on the GMAT, you start to look a little more in depth at what these factorizations mean, how you get there. But the point I want to get across to you today is that these composite numbers are defined by their prime factors. So if you start thinking about numbers in this more abstract way, even if you're shopping at the store, you see a sale for something on sale for $12. Think about what 12 consists of. If you see something on sale for $11, is 11 prime? Is 13 prime? What does 14 consist of? Someone who's very conversant with mathematics of this sort, you automatically think of numbers in this way. You just see 11 and know that it's prime. It doesn't have any factors. You see 12 and know that it's not prime. You know that it has several small prime factors. So just this sense of prime numbers defining other numbers will help you think more abstractly and it will give you a big step towards some of the more complicated properties of numbers questions on the GMAT math section. Now a couple other things to talk about before we wrap it up with GMAT prime numbers for today are a couple of special numbers. Now you'll notice I started this list at 2, but I could have put a 1 here. Remember the definition of primes is a number that's divisible only by 1 and itself. So 1 is only divisible by 1. So 1 is only divisible by 1 and by itself. It seems to fit the definition of a prime number. And this is something that, depending on who you're talking to, depending on which textbook you read, depending on whether you're looking at math now or 75 years ago, you'll see different answers for whether or not one is prime. Well, I'll kill the suspense right here and tell you, as far as the GMAT is concerned, one is not a prime number. One, in terms of prime, composite, it's a special exception. Basically, don't think about it in these terms. Because it doesn't have any factors besides one, as far as the GMAT is concerned, we're not thinking of it as a prime number. So that means that two, not only is it the only even prime, it's the smallest prime. So, one, not a prime number. I guarantee you, when you're practicing for the GMAT math section, you will see questions that hinge on whether you remember that, that one is not prime. If we take one more step back, you might ask yourself, what about zero? Zero, dividing numbers by zero gets a little tricky. So, again, I'll kill the suspense. Zero, not a prime. Negative numbers, not primes. When we're working with properties of numbers, number theory, we're generally talking about the positive integers. So, one and upwards. You can say that a negative number is divisible by something. For instance, negative 16 is divisible by 4 because if you divide negative 16 by 4, you get an integer. But as far as number properties are concerned, negative 16, negative 7, 0, negative 121, any negative number you want, it's not prime. It's not even really in the discussion.